Are you looking for him to come back? Amen. High upon the mountain, from where he ascended, an angel of the Lord declared that it would be. He said, don't send you reading, for the one that you see leaving in life. I believe he's coming back like he said. And I believe that a trumpet's going to sound so well. One day you'll wake the day. In the twinkling of an eye, he's going to split the eastern sky. I believe is nearing when we'll soon see his appearing this could be the hour this could be the day when all the saints from every nation they'll lose their gravitation in the gives you bad news, Dr. Jesus knows even better. Amen. 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 The doctor says there is no hope, there's nothing he can do. The banker says he'd like to help, but the loan just won't go through. The devil says you're going to die, but then you'll live in life. But I've got news for all of you. Our God's bigger than that. He's bigger than that. Our God's bigger than that. There's not a problem he can't solve. He knows right where you're at. He's bigger than that. Our God's bigger than that. God's awesome power has never changed. We know he's bigger than that. He paid for sickness and disease with the stripes on his back. He owns the diamonds, gold and all. The thief must bring it back. He stripped old Satan of his power. That's a well-known fact. So no matter what you're going through, our God's bigger than that. He's bigger than that. Our God's bigger than that. There's not a problem he can't solve. He knows right where you're at. Our God's bigger than that. God's all 
said, well, when you getting up there? <laughs> so, Brother Red, I got a ladder now at the back corner of the house. I just climb right on up and, and get up there because I'm in the doghouse a lot. Uh, God has been good. It's, I'm glad for the day when I made my way down to an old-fashioned altar, prayed through the old timey heartfelt Bible, believing soul cleansing still real today. Salvation. Amen. Have I been perfect? No. And probably neither of you. There's only one perfect person. That's Jesus Christ. That's right. And we strive for perfection. Mm -hmm. But we're human. And the Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And we'll stumble and we'll fall. Right, sure. But I'm glad that He doesn't pitch us over in the corner somewhere. But He keeps working on us, molding us, and making us. But we all the time, we mess up. So what we have to do, we have to fess up, right. as the old brother said, and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to try not to do that again, and just pick the pieces up and go on, because you can't go back and do over what you did yesterday, because that's behind you. But you press forward, as Paul said, to the mark of a high calling in Jesus Christ. Now, this song here that I'm fixing to sing, as the brother said, uh, it's got a good message in it. And it's sort of one of them peppy songs, and but it's got a great message in it. I'm not what I, I want to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. But thank God, I'm not what I was. That's right. And But I'm a work in progress, and probably you're the same as a Christian. But this song's entitled, Not What I Was. I like it already. I'm not what I want to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. Thank God I'm not what I was. What I was. I'm not what I want to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. Thank God I'm not what I was. What I was. Those things I counted once for gain. I count them now as loss. My torch was changed and rallied by the roadway of the cross. Though I know I'm not the man that I'm supposed to be, 
I'm striving daily to attain the likeness of his love, that I might have that resurrection power from above. I'm ever pressing toward that prize, that perfect peace to win, that on that day he calls me home. I know I'll be like him, well I'm not what I want to be, I'm not what I'm going to be, thank God. God's people should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, I've met a lot of so-called happy Christians in my lifetime, and let me tell you, they have a face long enough they could eat oats out of a thimble. I'm such a happy Christian. They're going to try to win somebody to Jesus. I'm glad the God I'm serving will put a little spring in your step. Put a little bubbling over in your soul. He'll change your countenance and he'll make you look at life different. Right. That's what Jesus Christ will do if you let him take control of your heart and life. Amen. 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 That's pretty good preaching, Tommy. That's a little mini sermon. Y'all excuse me. Is that okay? Because my perspiration is about to turn to sweat. <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get as comfortable as I can. And uh, so, because uh, I got about 80 songs I want to sing to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My collar, I was hung. Okay, I get that earbud. Earbud. That's what Rita calls these little old things right here. Little ear monitors. They're earbuds, but Brother Rita, she calls them earbugs. And sometimes they do bug me. Uh, but I didn't got so used to them that I don't use a monitor anymore that I just use these personal ear monitors. I'm looking at my list over here, honey. Uh, listen, here's a song, and I want you to listen to the message. This song has been around gospel music for ages. I can remember singing it back when I was just knee-high to the grasshopper. I ain't much bigger than that now. But singing with the, the master's quartet. And it has a great message. There's not going to be any crippled folks in heaven. Sure. Not going to be any blind folks in heaven. Right. Amen? Right. Because all that's going to be done away with because we're going to have a glorified body right. free from sickness and pain when we get to heaven. Right. And this song's entitled Hallelujah Square. I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah Square. A blind man, happy, alone. He was losing his way as he passed through the throne. Tears filled my eyes. I said, friend, you can't see. With a smile on his face, he replied,
Now he could not walk like we do down the street. I said, my friend, I feel sorry for you. But he said, up in heaven, I'm gonna walk just like you. Now I saw an old man gasping for breath. Now soon he be gone as his eyes closed in death. He looked at me and said, Now, boy, don't feel blue. I'm going up to heaven. salvation and feel as Christians what we feel in our heart. Can I hear an amen? amen? And I'm glad that he was willing to suffer. He could have called a legion of angels to a freedom from the cross. But his love for you and for me caused him to remain there. Now, old Satan, old Slewfoot himself thought that when they put him in the tomb, and they rolled that stone over that opening. They said, he said, I got him down. Well, that was the wrong answer. Because on the third day, what happened? The stone was rolled away. He came forth victorious. He's seated at the Father's right hand. And he has given the devil one heck of a fit. Amen. And like that song I said, I uh, sang earlier, our God's bigger than that. He's done stripped old Satan of his power and old devil don't even know it yet, Brother Brian. But this song says he's coming back. Just like that first song I sang, this one says he's coming back. Do you believe it? Amen. Listen to the message in this song. This is an old Laverne Tripp song. It's entitled, He's Coming Back. <laughs> On a cold and lonely hillside At a place called Calvary Hung a man slowly dying So all men could be free It was the blessed Messiah They crucified that day Father, please forgive them Was the prayer they heard him pray Then he found his head in victory It's finished, he did cry And the soldiers shoved the spear to his precious side, from the cross to the graveyard, they sealed him in a tomb. No one seemed to know that he'd be returning soon. He's coming back. He's coming back. Keep looking up. He's coming back. No grave can hold him. No power control. Coming back. On the first day of the week, 
At the breaking of the dawn, the boundless stone was rolled away, and Jesus Christ was gone. He appeared to his disciples and gave the joyful news. I conquered death, hell, and the grave, and I did it all for you. Now I'm going to my father. Someday you'll come too. Go now and tell all nations about the joyful news. When you hear of wars and earthquakes and famine fills the land, just lift your eyes toward heaven, cause I'm coming back again. He's coming back. He's coming back. Keep looking up. He's coming back, no they can hold him, no power control him, he's gone away, but he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, keep looking up, he's coming back, no they can hold him, no power control Coming back, coming back. Hey, I'm not laughing because he's coming back, but I don't. What did you do? Did you do what I think you done? Uh, right. You should have just left it. So I'm, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna score you just a little bit. If in the future that happens, don't touch it. Leave it where it's at. I knew that that was the situation. I was going to bring it to your attention. Uh, I have to get out for every once in a while. Bring it on that ladder, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be back. Going back up the ladder. I, I thought it was going a little fast, and I thought to myself, I said to myself, self, I believe she has got that because I'll share it with you. Listen, we're just here among family, just folks. Love the Lord. But this little old machine right here can do some, phen some phenomenal things like just what it did. Uh, but uh, you can, I can raise the, the track a little bit if I want to maybe raise it a half a step or a full step. Or I can lower it a half a step or a full step. And so what happened, she done changed that thing prior. No, you had it on that from that other Well, I know, I know, I know you forgot to bring it back to zero. I understand. <laughs> and I think, I think it's been like that from the start. Well, I haven't used that one. Oh, oh, okay. I thought it had. That's okay. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's the reason that thing fluctuates. And she just changed it right up. I thought I was, boy, I was a cruising, Brian. And all of a sudden, I just felt like somebody just reached out and grabbed me and went, ooh. Because when you when you slow that thing back, she had it probably I don't know what uh, two plus two or three, and then she brought it back to zero. I just like somebody putting their foot on the brakes and whoa, that's what happened. Now y'all know all of her secrets. What, what's that, Ryan? If you don't back up very often, you're going to take your lunch up on that. Yeah, there you go. I get people to ask, what, especially Rita, uh, what she might have done prior to us, you know, going into full-time ministry. She still cleans uh, three or four houses, I think, but at one time she had more than that. But prior to that, they said, what did she do? Did, she worked for herself, but she had a public job. And she worked at an orange juice plant. And they had to let her go because they said she couldn't concentrate. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hey, when he gets on the roof, take the ladder away. <laughs> oh, man. Now, isn't, isn't it good that we can laugh? Yeah, they, 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 there's, there's too much sadness and too much going on in the world today and that we we, we got to every once in a while lighten up and, and laugh a little bit because the Bible says it 
does the heart good. Am I right, right. Rick, Brad? Amen. Like a, a medicine. Right. And so, listen, if you love the Lord, notify your face. <laughs> Jesus Christ loves you, and he, and he died for you, and he, and he loves you with an unconditional love. And he's a friend that sticks closer than a rope. Listen, can I do something? I, I want to do something. It, it's, it's unusual, but I, 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 I've, I've never done this thing out. Let me get my, I, got a, I even got a head of words, huh? I'll tell you what you do. Uh, finally, that, finally, I got them right here. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Uh, I, I probably need my glasses. I may have to have this stand. Uh, but is my glasses right there somewhere? I got them right here. Y'all just bear with us because I want you to hear this. I really do. Because we know what America is, the trouble that we're in today. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And I'm all for getting America back to where it was 40 years ago. Can I hear an amen? amen. And because when you see what's happening in our schools, you can see what's happening in, in our government. And this song, you, know, you get that, you got it on five, right? That's good. I'm, I'm going to make sure she, she does what she's supposed to do. I thought she had it marked down on her paper, but I'm just following up. But anyway, the title of this song is We Want America Back. And I trust when I get through with this song, I can hear a big amen from all of you and to sort of solidify what this song speaks about, that we want America back to where it once was. And we can do it, I believe, if Christian people will get together. We can right the ship. Can I hear an amen? amen. But I believe you'll enjoy the message. And this is the first time I've ever tried to do this out because it's got a lot of talking in it. I've never been a good recitation person like Roy Paul and, and uh, big Chief and a lot of those guys, but I want you to listen to the message in this song's entitled, We Want America Back. Something is wrong with America. She once held the Bible as her conscience and guide. And she's allowed those who hold nothing to be sacred, like Sodom of old, to push morals aside. We must return to the values we left. I'm sorry. We must return to the values we lost before this country we love is totally lost. We want America back. We want America back. For those who have no self-control America back. This nation is like a runaway train. And down the wrong track. It's time for the army of God to arise and say we want America back. I love America. But I do not love what she has become. Scripture says, Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. And America has forgotten the godly foundation upon which she was built. Something is wrong. Our children are asked to attend public schools, which in many cases resemble a war zone, without even the most basic right of any soldier. That's the right to pray the God of heaven. Many times, the wild-eyed, drug-addicted, gun-carrying teenager is allowed to stay in school while the Supreme Court decided to expel God 
from our classrooms over 30 years ago. Something is wrong. Television daily bombards the senses of our nation with the idea that wrong is right and that abnormal is normal and that abort is acceptable and what God calls abomination is merely an alternate lifestyle in the heaven of faith. 30 years ago, the number one television program in America was the Andy Griffith Show. Look what we have today. Something is wrong when our leaders can say to your children and mine that premarital sex is all right as long as it's safe. Yes, something is wrong, and I'm ready for a change. I will say to my government, I'm not raising dogs in my house. I'm raising children made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God, and I'm going to teach them the Bible. If the Bible says it's right, it's right. If the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. The only hope that America has is that godly men and women of character will stand together as one mighty army and declare to the immoral, the impure, the obscene, and the foul that your days of unlimited access to the minds of America is over. The army of God has been silent too long. We're going to take America back. Amen. It's time for the army of God to arise and say we want America back. It's time for the army of God to arise and say we want America every fiber is within me because I was raised in a godly home with parents that loved the Lord and wasn't ashamed to tell people that how they loved the Lord. And they, they told us, oh, was I the, the upright, just a perfect child? No. And I'm sure you wasn't either because I was just a boy. And I got into everything that you could get into as a boy. But I'm glad for parents that loved us, borrowed kids, enough that they had us in church every time the church doors was open. <coughs> and I was telling Rita that the other morning we were watching a summer uh, preaching religious program, TV uh, evangelist, anyway. And he was expounding on the fact of, and he got on Psalms 91. Mm -hmm. And boy, if I heard that psalm read to me one time, I heard it a thousand times because that was my mama's favorite song. And when daddy couldn't gather us children around, mama got us. And she'd set us down and she'd get out to the old Bible and she'd start reading that 91st psalm. And boy, when he get on that the other day, that brought back memories to me that, of the 91st Psalm. If you haven't read it, read it. it it's got some powerful stuff in it. And, am I right, Reed? I mean, great stuff. That have the Lord protect you. And He'll be with you. And, and He'll not leave you. He'll not forsake you. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't come to preach. I come to sing. But... Uh, it's a poor dog that won't wag its own tail. <laughs> let me sing. Let me sing one more song before we uh, take a short break, and I'll get wet my whistle and get my oxygen tank filled back up, and we'll come back and sing a few more songs for you. Now, here's a song. I don't know whether you like yourself. I like Christmas music, 24/7. 365 days out of the year. I like Christmas music. 
But this particular Christmas song is one of them that really gets going. It's whoever wrote it probably put more words in it than it should have because it doesn't give you a lot of breathing room and it really gets going. But I love singing it. It's entitled Glory to God in the Highest Peace on Earth. Goodwill to men. Now if you see me reach down here and do like that, I'm just getting another blast of air in these old lungs because that's what it's going to take to get through this one. And we'll see how it goes. That's a little bass out of Look up, fear not, the angel said, Behold, the Messiah's come, the one of whom you read and death. He spoke to men that day, the heavenly hosts around the throne going in to say, Glory to God in the highest peace on earth and goodwill to men. Heaven the angels announced his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah, the Lord sing holy. Born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. And still today, the wise men come, offering their praise to God's anointed one. And they did speak their heart felt love. That glorious sound falls on fire from up above. Glory to God in the highest peace on earth and goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Glory to God in the highest glory. Earth and goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah, the Lord's name, holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Glory to God in the highest peace on earth and goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah, the Lord's name, holy. Born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord. Say glory. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Say glory. Born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. 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 Far too many churches in the Roanoke Valley and across our land. Far too many gospel music, or far too many musicians, Christian musicians, and far too many preachers emphasize the gospel of Jesus Christ these days. And so it's important that we stand up and stand out, speak up and speak out about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now more than ever. The majority of sermons that were preached today in the Roanoke Valley did not have the gospel of Jesus Christ down. The majority of the music that was sung in churches didn't have the gospel in there. So we want to say thank you, Brother Tommy, for your ministry and the special emphasis on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul the Apostle said that the gospel is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. You know, the only way somebody can get saved is if they hear the gospel. I remember sitting in Bible college the pastor of the church, the mega church, would preach a sermon. And I kid you not, I'm in an independent, fundamental, right wing radical Baptist church. The gospel wasn't presented in the sermon. And people would still come down the aisle and get saved. I was like, what is going on? 
And then I began to notice a lot of them were children. And a lot of them were younger folks. And they were in other services within these megachurches. Anyway, so to make a long story short, short, it doesn't matter if you're an independent, radical, King James Bible thumping church or a very liberal, non-denominational church. The gospel is rarely presented these days. And it's now time more than ever that we emphasize that great message. In every sermon, every Sunday school lesson, everything that we do, every song that we sing, we should talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for us. Well, at this time we'll have a couple ushers come. We have some offering plates up here. Um, and while the ushers are coming, just wanted to let you know that all that's donated this evening is going towards the Barlows and their ministry. And I personally am encouraged by their ministry. So give however the Lord leads you in this manner. But while the ushers are coming, are there any special prayer requests in the, in the church this evening? Anything that you'd like for us to be praying for this time? Uh, Miss Kathleen? Oh, Joanne Roseman is having a surgery, serious kind of surgery. And that's your neighbor, correct? Okay. You're praying for your neighbor. Any other special prayer requests? Miss Rachel? Uh, Jerry Green. Okay, we'll be praying. Yes, Okay, well, we're sorry to hear that. We'll be praying for that special request. So let's continue to lift up Miss Shirley Ray in our prayers this evening. Any other special prayer requests before we go to the Lord in prayer? Okay. Pastor Ringless, would you lead us in the Lord in prayer for these things and for the offer? Father, thank you for the Jesus on that day. 
days, it won't be long. One of these days, it won't be very long. One of these days, when I hear that beautiful song, I'll see him in that robe of white. Everything will be alright. One of these days, it won't be long. I'll learn these words one of these days. <laughs> what a day that day will be when he comes for you and me. One of these days it won't be long. With my Lord I'll ever be over by the crystal sea. One of these days it won't be long. One of these days it won't be very long. One of these days when I hear that beautiful song. I'll see him in that row of white, everything will be alright. One of these days, it won't be long. One of these days, it won't be very long. One of these Quicksilver, that's uh, their, their soundtrack. And so I got another one about, about that same speed. It's entitled Light on My Feet and Ready to Fly. I won't sing it tonight. Maybe if I get to come back, we'll do that. Uh, here's a song that I want to uh, we'll slow things down just a little bit. I want you to listen to the message in this song. This is a song that probably a lot of people say, hey, Tommy, that's your signature song. I don't sing it as much today as I did back in the early 90s uh, when I sang with Bill Payton and the Southern Statesman. Any of y'all remember Bill Payton and the Southern Statesman Quartet? We did till the storm passes by uh, so many times. I don't guess there was a, a program that we did in the six years that I sang with the Southern Statesman that we didn't do till the storm passes by. And aren't you glad we serve a God that will be with you and he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's always there. And he'll see you through the storms of life and if you just trust him. But listen to the message in this song titled, Tell the Storm Pass the Life. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Sister Vest will be out there and had that hair stacked up about that high. And I often wondered how she got in that Silver Eagle bus. Up through the door of that thing, she had that hair beehive up there about that high. Y'all remember that? But now later days, y'all remember when Gaither got a hold of her. And uh, of course, she come to a more stylish, you know, with her hair. But she got away from that beehive uh, hair style. But the Happy Goodmans used to do this song. And it's entitled, The Sweetest Song. I know. I've heard them say he paid the price and Jesus bore it all. I heard them sing, I'm coming home and hear the master's call. I heard them sing the modern songs and the songs of long ago. The amazing grace, how sweet the sound is, the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, no sweet. Like music from the world above, it made my soul rejoice. So soothing words and melody like the rippling waters flow. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound is the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. No sweeter song could ever be found. I've heard of a Thank you. 
sound, no speech you hear her song could ever be found. I've heard of a fountain filled with blood, but amazing grace is the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, no speech you hear her song could ever be found. I've heard of a fountain filled with blood, but amazing grace is the sweetest song I that you'll be able to come. Next May, right now we've got our sights set on Saturday night before Mother's Day. It'll be Saturday, Mother's Day be the next day. That we're going to do a 50 year anniversary thing. Next year will be 50 years I have been singing the gospel all of the day. Kansas and Missouri, mostly on the East Coast from Florida to New York, Ohio, West Virginia, and we branched out into Kansas and Missouri. But God has been good to us and allows us to do, uh, to sing 50 years. I know you look at me and you say you don't even look 50. <laughs> it's a miracle what three facelifts will do. <laughs> Uh, but he has been good to us. And we're going to do, right now, uh, we're setting uh, Steve Parker, who is a pastor at Living Well Nazarene Church in Salem, has agreed to host. And so we're going to try to get, I'm going to try to get as many of the guys and only two girls I've seen with in 50 years. Now, I won't say it's the only time I've seen with them, but as far as seeing any group for any period of time was Trilby Whitehead when I sang with the Victors and Joanna Hutchison when I sang with uh, Highest Praise. So we're hoping the two ladies can be there that night along with several other guys that I have sang with because I have sang with a host of good singers in 50 years. And uh, with the Virginians Quartet, uh, the Victors, the Southland Boys, the Southern Statesmen, the Masters Quartet, uh, and it goes on and on. They just call me old suitcase Tommy. <laughs> Somebody calls and, can you help me out? Yeah, I'm going. So, but uh, it's approaching 10 years now that we've been solo. And so that's what we felt God, like God called us to do. And after 40 years of singing the quartets and trios, um, I felt a calling to branch out on my own, and God has been good to me. I asked him, I said, Lord, you sure that's what you want me to do? And he said, you do it, and I'll be with you. And I said, are you sure? He said, if I told you to do it, I said I'd be with you. And let me tell you, he has been with us every step of the way. And we give him all the praise and all the glory whatever we do because we can't do anything without his help and him helping us do it and it's through his grace and his mercy that he allows us to do what we're doing just like we're singing tonight and we love singing coming to churches and just singing to folks just like you all yeah and i like love to see the reaction when you look at me and you say that's the weirdest looking guy I saw. <laughs> and a big old smile comes across your face and if we can bring a smile and, and we can hear an amen and we can see you lift your hand up every once in a while when I hit on a, a verse of a song that really stirs something in your heart and that makes everything that we do worthwhile. But if you have a void in your life, Jesus Christ is the only one, the only one that can feel that void and that void in your heart and that hole in your heart. 
You can try other methods and you can try other things, but I'll guarantee you, you try Jesus. And he will fill that void and give you a peace that the world can't give you and the world can't take away. But this song is entitled, The Wounding in Me. like I like to hear it. 
He don't sugarcoat it. He just tells it like it is. And that's the way we ought to have it. Amen. Is, is, you don't just sugarcoat things, but give the gospel. And so you're blessed to have a great man of God. And, and listen, he's young. He's a young whippersnapper. <laughs> he's got a lot of great years to give to their group families. And I know his heart is where it needs to be. And, uh, so you are fortunate to have a great man of God uh, that uh, will preach to you and love you and uh, be concerned about you. And and you show your gratitude toward him. And I am a new cat man. <laughs> <laughs> But I know you. I know you. What's that? Lever he said, no, go on, Pastor uh, Cadillac, get him a Lamborghini. <laughs> but uh, uh, lift him up. And, uh, I know you've you got a great pastor here. He loves the Lord. He loves his congregation. He loves his church. And uh, so you're fortunate. And, uh, that, uh, you, you, and you're fortunate to have a great group of people here uh, that you can just preach to, that will support you. And uh, so, you know, that goes hand in hand. Uh, real quickly, before I turn this mic back and you just do whatever you have to do, uh, we do have CDs. We have eight. Uh, we don't, do we have any more of the, one of the, of the highest praises? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you missed out on the package deal because last week we had nine, would have been nine CDs. Eight of Tommy Barlow and then uh, I had a, a trio CD that I sang with when I sang with the group Highest Praise. We were given away with, if you bought any three, we give you that CD, which would have been four CDs, 45 songs for $20. But they're gone. Everybody jumped on that and bought all them real quick. Uh, but anyway, we have eight different CDs, and so if you'll buy any three for 20 if you want all eight of the CDs. You'll be helping our ministry $50. You can have all eight of them. You can't get a deal like that at Target anywhere, and I guarantee you they'll bless your heart. And if you buy them and you don't like them, you can call me. God bless you. Remember us in your prayers and do one thing. We do one thing for us. Help us to remember why we sing and who we sing about. There's only one star, and that's Jesus Christ, the bright and morning star, the beautiful rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, and our soon coming Savior. God bless you.